how the precepts of God are preserved in a territory our sensitivity largely very dull largely very dull any and everything happens around us and there is no acumen no perception we see and hear things we do not have strength and capacity to interpret so we become victims of anything and anybody who presses a little more than usual we we accept it that that person is being called into the ministry Number one, the first way, listen carefully, that the purposes of God are both established and preserved in a territory. Like our territory, Zaria here for instance, is prayer. Write it down, prayer. The first way the purposes of God are established upon a territory and also preserved is prayer. Warfare and intercession, write it down. A lost act in the body of Christ. Genuine warfare and intercession. Let me tell you something. If we ever have a generation that laughs at warfare and intercession, that's the generation that will not live to hand over to another. I promise you. I promise you. Our, our spiritual ignorance is tilting us gradually to downplay the role of spiritual warfare and intercession over certain the atmospheres and the climates of territories to allow that territory host God brothers and sisters it takes prayer it takes genuine warfare and intercession for the heavens to be open over a territory enough for the purposes of God to be established warfare Ezekiel chapter 22 it's a long reading 23 to 31 but the verse of emphasis is verse 30 Ezekiel 22 please help us media Ezekiel chapter 22 and the word of the Lord came unto me saying long reading quickly please Just go to verse 30 because at, at the way we are going we are going to waste too much time and I sought for a man among them now this was God angry with a territory that's why what I wanted us to read but because of time we'll just look at 30 God was angry with a territory and was about to pour his indignation and his judgment and God said that mercy dimension of me was still there but I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land for what for the land not for the church i'm talking about taking over territories preserving the precepts of god over a territory a man that will stand for the land so there are men that can stand for the land not just their churches that because of their presence and the business they do with God, certain things can happen to territories. They don't even know why it came and how it came. But a man stood for a land. That I should not destroy it, but I found... Did he say I did not find human beings? There were human beings. Many. But I found none. That man built in capacity and understanding. The ministry of prayer let me tell you this believe me hear me church of the Lord Jesus Christ everywhere here in any nation but more specifically in Zaria if we stop praying in Zaria because of some kind of spiritual laziness you will be shocked the way darkness will prevail over the city are we together the ministry of prayer is one of the foundational tenets that must be preserved in every generation I don't care whether the believer is going to be a man of God or a civil servant or a politician the ministry of prayer must be indoctrinated in every believer he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray 
and not to faint. Not just need driven prayers alone. But we must graduate from realms of just praying, give me tea, give me bread, to taking over lands. That because of your presence in the territory, you subdue the controlling powers, the powers that mold the mindsets of people, the powers that are responsible for prevalent tragedies over a nation. That you come into a city and find accidents anyhow, all kinds of things anyhow, and you realize that you have been made a king and a priest over that territory. And part of the ministry of your priesthood is advocacy. That you go before God and you stand face to face with the controlling powers. That's what men did in the Bible. Abraham stood in for Sodom and Gomorrah. Are we together? Preserve the family of Lot. The wife chose the way she wanted. Joseph stood in. Preserve certain things. Daniel stood in. Preserve. Are you not men who preserve the purposes of God? Your generation. The ministry of warfare and prayer the ministry of warfare Ephesians chapter 6 when we read from verse 10 to 19 the Bible tells us listen carefully the Bible tells us that um, we should be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might then it says we should put the full armor of God are we together then it says how that we we do not war against principalities and powers but against um, rulers and flesh and blood but principalities and powers and all of that it begins to tell us that in every territory these demonic structures exist hold on let me preach to educated people you know sometimes because we have gone to school because we are rich small money small job we um, and sometimes innocently and truthfully I hear preachers downplay the presence of controlling powers over cities simply because at the present they are doing well let me tell you something Satan is many things a fool is not one of them I hear what I'm saying Satan is defeated Satan is old Satan is several things but a fool is not one of them he has the advantage of age time he has studied mankind different species of people have lived upon this earth he has had an advantage of one-to-one -one experience satan has existed before several dispensations before adam's dispensation that brought us into the sea every territory has controlling powers every territory has controlling powers if you see the purposes of God prevailing in that territory, brothers and sisters, it's not because the controlling powers are not there. An agency in the spirit, a system has been lifted in the heaven that has clamped down the activities of darkness enough to allow the purposes of God find expression. That's why I said if we stop praying, or if we concentrate on childish immature prayer lord give me tea tomorrow again oh god i forgot to ask for bread yesterday there is a place where you ask for your needs but notice how jesus taught us to pray our father who art in heaven we reverence you after reverencing him the next thing is your agenda your kingdom come your kingdom come your kingdom come upon a land upon a territory listen the concept of prayer chains, the concept of prayer groups, the concept of prayer cells in territories must never end. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes. Now, the, the, the challenge with many people is that the moment people start praying, carnality comes in and they are looking who is the leader among these three people? What is the name of this ministry of four of us? I don't know who taught us that prayer groups, prayer cells, prayer chains, there should be some structure of leadership. But, you know, we have this mentality and, and especially some of us who are coming up are mentoring this wrong thing from some of us men of God. The moment people start praying, everybody is obsessed about who is the leader, who has the protocol to follow him. If, if we do like that, then the devil is going to destroy us. In every city and territory in Zaria there should be prayer portals that's how the kingdom works 
I'm a good student of revivals. That's how it should work. In Samaru, there should be units of men and women praying. High in Dogo, there should be people. There has to be representations of the kingdom sending an incense of prayer on a daily basis. That's why I thank God for all the groups scattered around. And notice that's what Satan hates. The moment there are people praying, some kinds of agitation must arise from anywhere. Preservers of the ordinances of God. Gone are the days where churches start as prayer groups. Now churches start as intentional, organized platforms for the enjoyment of the man of God. Are we together? That before a man of God starts ministry, he has sewn his clothes for one year. Are we together? The offering basket has been made. Tight envelope is in is, is intact. What is it? We, we better be careful. This joke that we keep joking with ourselves. Every correct ministry starts as a it doesn't it? let me tell you most men of god that are being used mightily by god today ask them their intention was never ministry they were men who made themselves available when god called them they went back and cried and said god can you use somebody else god will say you are the person you can choose to say no but i'm not using any other person you are the one i will use but now you see the appetite with which we rush into this thing and the devil doesn't he, he doesn't stop us because there's whether we are in it or outside it's, there's, it makes no difference to him we are still equally ignorant prayer that's how this ministry started prayer every day fire on the altar and I'm not talking of the kind of prayer that is for one hour and you talk for 60 minutes and you say let's let's thank God that's Bible study prayer should be an intense time of engaging in the spirit only to be interrupted shortly to establish a few things strengthen the understandings of the people the fire continues this is the kind of prayer that can host heaven in eternity let me be honest with you many territories have a lot of repentance to do many families have a lot of repentance to do the prayer lives of many people are under attack when the devil finds out that there's no hope of you backsliding in prayer he tells your prayer to become a selfish one so you are praying for hours but you are making minimal minimal spiritual progress i insist prayer chains prayer groups there are many of you here that the burden is in your hand it's not carnality and it is not ministry either when you let me teach you something every time you get to a new land before you get accommodation find somewhere where you can pray scan around the back of one tree shout and hear whether it disturbs anybody if that's good, dedicate it as an altar to start with don't go around and say where can i get a hotel and all this rubbish no find a place to pray somebody will join you another person will join you the devil is in trouble once there are up to two people or three that can agree to be praying apostle but what is the name of the ministry it's not it doesn't have a name the ministry is traveling in the spirit until the purposes of god are portioned for that territory so it doesn't matter where you are the assignment is the same if you leave Zaria for a three-week break and you are in Kogi for that three week every demon and devil in Kogi state will feel the fire when you return it doesn't matter someone else is returning there so there's fire everywhere say everywhere but now you find out that some places are as cold as ice whereas some other places are on fire do you know whenever you travel for a ministry to a, to a ministry the purpose is not just to go there to watch a superstar the purpose is to carry like a coal you go and fetch some of it are we together that's why when i see people come from other places i like laying my hands on them it's not just for showmanship so you carry something the goal is to take it back to your territory the same way we do it in the physical when they want to teach an organization certain things and they can't sponsor all of them what do they do they pick one man is that true or a few people send them abroad for the training when they return back they teach the people not shine with it 
not shine with it this is where we are missing it train the people one of the biggest killers in ministry is title and that sense of control over men if we don't repent out of it you know i look at people and there is such an obsession to be the leader okay this group is the name is is, is, is um, salvation power intercessory group and i'm the one i'm the, the, the i'm the chief uh, uh, coordinator of it that means i'm the one who prays more and all these ones are my children you start praying in two months everybody that comes here is your child including people like our mother here that came to all, all this this poor self-esteem that we have transferred into our prayer lives and ministries this title and an obsession for platforms is what is killing the move of god in many territories do you know there are people as students years ago there are people who had different prayer groups when when all of them were finishing they just left they've gone on other places doing great things but most of us you pray for two days and then the next thing you carry a piece of paper who is really the secretary among these five people we need to define it because the other day i didn't tell anybody to lead prayer and this other lady suddenly when did she join this thing before and you see we, we start politicizing it are you not from Madam Mama? Me too, I'm from Madam. That one came, I don't say from Lagos. He said, we don't want to bring all these kind of things. And we kill the move of God with very frivolous, childish things. Another thing that kills prayer is love. No, not love, relationship. Hello? I keep saying it. There are people till today, they have no business loving anybody. Please hear what I'm saying all this thing of coming to the house of god for one month and you're already eyeing every sister every brother you are in love no sir this is not how we train people we train people to look for god first press into god have a testament a a track record then you can love but now everybody is, is just you, you come in two days you are praying people are closing their eyes praying and what you are doing is you are looking out for for who it is to marry i'm not saying god cannot use those platforms in fact god should use them are we together however your heart if the reason why you are in several prayer groups is to find a wife or find a husband you need to re-engineer and renew your mind and repent and ask for forgiveness and concentrate on the major reason why you are there first most people who become mightily used by god never go there to marry they go there to seek god they pray with all their heart and soul, and one day while they are praying god will tell them you see this 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 lady it's even god that will tell them my son look you have been serving me sincerely this this one that you are serving you need a helper i said god i can continue but it's me that i say you need a helper but now we are the ones bombarding the gate of heaven a prayer request full of oh god one time marry and god what have you done for me you have not done anything nobody has been saved as a result he says come to come to the house of god you are not contributing anything and the next thing you want to take and and usually is god's best we want to take oh come on please are we blessed let me be honest with you church of the lord jesus christ let's return to the place of seeking god sincerely and passionately or coming to the house of God and everybody is checking what did this one this prayer group ah I like this suit that this one is wearing I know no. father your kingdom come in this territory there is darkness Lord we just noticed that 11 people died in nine months that means there is a spirit passing through that territory unhindered and all of a sudden one faithful day that spirit will hear a sound from the earth Shakata as he's moving to high in Dogo, someone is taking it from there let me tell you how you drive spirits you make the heavens unconducive don't laugh at what i'm telling you i'm teaching you how this thing works because they will always leave where there is fire and settle down and wait for a backsliding territory and then return back this is how many of those we admire today that's how they were raised they were never 
a dream is here asking those of you who were there when koinonia when he and i started when you got born again in two weeks it will be as if you have spent one year in christ because there was fire everywhere there still is but because we're a lot more organized now it is very difficult when people got there were people who would get born again filled with the holy spirit from day two they start prophesying and even with the prophesying they are not going anywhere because they are still demons to get out of there as they finish prophesying they want humble themselves and sit down and learn but now someone gets born again after one month because of the gift of the spirit he prophesies she prophesies the next thing they start speaking to people they speak mistakes into the lives of people because they are seen correctly but the dynamics of interpreting spiritual things is not there and before you will now learn and grow you have misled several people gift is not maturity you need to stay with god no matter how you rush you must stay that fire that fire is the maker of men anybody that dodges fire don't trust him don't trust him you must be refined as of gold our desires and appetites must be taught genuinely to seek god say amen prayer i'm encouraging you i'm encouraging the church in zaria i'm encouraging the church everywhere there must be prayer units most ministries do it but many ministries what what they do is not really prayer unit it's just maybe home sales which is wonderful i i, I don't have a problem with it do you know why we not do it as koinonia because you are an extension of the ministry the goal is not joshua selman in every home the goal is the kingdom the power the glory of god your house can become an altar your small area can become an altar two of you three of you can begin to pray it doesn't matter that God started with you. It doesn't need to have a name. The name is prayer. Seven to nine. Five to six in the morning. Nine to ten. Every day or two days in a week or three days in a week. You do this and see what begins to happen. Let me tell you what begins to happen. The moment you pray, there will first be silence. One month, two months, you will start seeing physical agitations. The demons that are resident in men will start reacting something is happening in the realm of the spirit your own loved ones will start fighting you for reasons you cannot explain and say look um you are becoming proud and you say no no sir i'm not because you are becoming proud the moment they say that remember spiritual intelligence you know it's not the individual you you respect the body but go back in the spirit and say satan i'm still there i know it's you jesus looked at peter and said satan get thee behind you and you go and continue and then one day let me tell you how god will announce that he has come to that territory a spectacular move of god will happen one day you will see people in a family and they are just sitting down watching football and the power of god breaks out in that house breaks out in a house where they hate the holy spirit guess who the first to be filled with the holy ghost will be the father himself and you are wondering my father my father yes your father this controversial person who is so scientific yes sir yes sir he's the one god your prayer the holy spirit has been eyeing him and on that day we have missed it there are many territories that are cold so the only way people can get some fire is when they rush and converge in particular places the place of convergence is important but the place of convergence should not be a remedy for lack of fire where you are. It should be a place to come and receive a greater fanning. Can you make a commitment in one minute that you will become an extension of the fire of God in your territory? Pray. Pray in one minute. Cast away lukewarmness. Some of us, our lives are under attack. We are seeing it, but we do not care. The grace for prayer zero. Every and anybody is distracting your prayer life. I'm busy, I'm busy. A deception by the pit of hell. Lord, in the 
find the staff quarters find the space through me lord in prison we represent an extension of that altar of prayer Hallelujah. Listen, let your prayer be focused on impact, not titles. Impact, not titles. If you are here roaming around looking for people to start going to your small church, lock it down and go and start praying. Alone, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't invite anybody. Let them come and meet you praying. Shakata, kata, kata. Lekata, kata. And you are praying and God is watching you. My beloved son. No carpet. No canopy. No mic. No suit. No nothing. But a genuine desire to seek him. And God is saying I, I am watching. Listen. All this, all this running around. Am I a prophet or am I an apostle? Is nonsense. It is the place of prayer and work. There is nobody that starts ministry and start walking with God knowing who he is even if God tells you it will not look like that are you hearing what I'm saying all this I am apostle this just wait and see it will happen you are joking nothing will happen it is in the place of prayer as that fire refines you it starts drawing you to become something and everybody starts saying this is the training of a prophet even you you may mistake yourself for an evangelist because the only thing you did was crusade. But then it's eventually, as it's building you, you know that no, this training is not an evangelist training. Ah, why is this unusual? Ah, there are people who think they are calling, they are, some of you here seated, you are born prophets with the office of a prophet, but you have not seen one vision. Because it's not about the vision. Keep praying. Just continue. Just continue. You will argue with anybody and say, No, sir, I'm not a prophet. Me, I, I know I'm a pastor because I'm a good teacher. You will find out that teaching is not even part of it. Just keep praying. The refiner's fire comes through that prayer. When your heart is being purged, are we together now? Flesh is being taken away. One day you will begin to pray, and all of a sudden, you will find out that you will prophesy like Saul from morning till night and step into a strange dimension. Many people who are calling themselves many offices take it from me, they are wrong. They don't know. It is only the place of the dealing of the spirit that makes you, you say you are a pastor, who told you? Just because someone prophesied, he saw in part and he said so, he may be right, but he may not be it. No, don't say just because you saw a ring, you saw a hand. You say, I'm a prophet, I'm a prophetess, I'm an apostle. No, sir, don't flatter yourself. Let the place of prayer incubate you. When you come out fully, the name that you are will be shown. Not just by titles, results. Results. Results will show who you are. If you're a prophet, don't tell us. Let the results show it. Show us the eye of the spirit you received in the place of prayer. Show us the acumen, the ability to perceive realities. That's what makes a prophet. Show us the ability to bring things down from the realm of the spirit. Don't come and talk jargons and waste our time. Show us the performance that comes based on the word of God. Show us the throne in heaven that backs that office. Don't say I'm an apostle. Show us the throne that backs you. Show us the keys of the territory that was given to you. We go around bragging, calling ourselves names, flattering ourselves and deceiving people and being deceived ourselves. Pray in one minute, Lord, a restoration of the grace for warfare and intercession. Praying over a land. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Restore me back, oh God. 
to the ordinances of the fathers. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. Restore me back. The ordinances that help men to walk with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I once saw a man of God that I knew years ago. When I shook that man, as soon as I shook him, tears filled my eyes. I was almost asking him, where did your fire go to? What happened to you? What made you cold like this? Who deceived you? What did you start listening to? Where did you go? Which association did you join? Restore my fire. Lift your voice and pray. Cry it from your spirit. Restore my fire. Shakata kata. Leketo sakos kabriata. Restore my fire. Restore it, oh God. The destiny of a territory is at stake. The destiny of a territory is at stake. This is not the issue of being a man of God. This is not the issue of being in ministry. Preserve us of the ordinances of the Spirit. Daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, every day, daily prayers, without fail. Ongoing 
I'm in ministry. I know how busy ministry can be. Let me tell you, you need to love God beyond money and beyond members and beyond power to remain prayerful as a man of God. No matter, you can be leading a prayer movement. It's no guarantee that you pray yourself. You can pray whenever you are with the people. It's no guarantee. Many prayer, many men of God that lead prayer groups, I tell you, their own prayer lives is dying. I tell you this as a man of God. Because it is hard work for a man of God to be consistent in prayer and be in ministry. There are ladies that don't pray. Don't pray. Fashion is, is eating us up. I believe in fashion, look good. But it's complete nonsense if you don't pray. Can we pray in the spirit just for one minute? Just, just to allow the Holy Spirit to bring this. There are gentlemen that don't pray. We are over conscious of ourselves. No, sir. Teach your children to pray. Teach your children to pray. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Prayer. Preserve prayer in every territory. Preserve it in your house. Preserve it in your life. Preserve it everywhere. Don't let it go. No matter who laughs at you, no matter how Western, those of you listening from other nations of the world, restore prayers back to your homes. Restore prayer back to your churches. Whether you are in America, whether you are in London, it doesn't matter where. Restore prayer back. Prayer has equal value everywhere. Whether you are rich or poor, your personal comfort has nothing to do with your prayer life. Number two. How are the ordinances of God advanced and preserved? A regular convergence of believers within that territory. The second way that the ordinances of God are not only transferred but preserved is that there must be a regular convergence of believers within that territory to be trained equipped empowered there is no territory that can preserve a spiritual heritage when there is no platform for a regular convergence of believers be it a regular church service be it a midweek service be it different interdenominational programs it doesn't matter there has to be a regular convergence there must be a platform where the believers within that territory keep in touch they are trained they are equipped they are empowered then they also receive the blueprint of god's current emphasis is one of the highest advantage of coming together when believers come together the whole territory can hear what God is doing now don't assume that because God moved in a particular way yesterday that's what he's still doing today when a territory dissociates itself from Psalms 133 a convergence for the purpose of being equipped it is for this reason that God anointed some. He gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of those people within that territory. So what, what happens here every week is the will of God. A convergence of men and women. Are you seeing why when people begin to say it's not the issue of crowd, 
that there is a joke are the people cheers the more the people within a territory that can converge to hear the precepts of god provided the dispensers of that truth are in touch with god is an advantage in the multitude of people is a king's honor the king there is not the man of god the king there is the king of kings in the multitude of people within a territory don't have a territory of five million people and the largest church in that territory is 300 people and you say it doesn't matter what else matters why didn't jesus die for 12 people and say 12 people receive my salvation then any other person who is interested no he died for the whole world don't get into that mistake of resenting crowds just because there are people or there may be ministries that have crowds and maybe the men of god and the women of god may not be well positioned to supply them the kind of spiritual feeding does not mean that God is against crowd when you reject it it looks like you are being spiritual but that's been carnal anybody that knows God must love people Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 to 47 they continued as to and they continued look at me who are the day the community of believers within that territory they continued steadfastly consistently unbendingly in the rain in the sunshine convenient or not convenient the sad reality is that most people in the body of Christ have been indoctrinated that only when things become convenient for you there are people who come to church and now i believe in excellence but just a little heat somewhere they said i'm too i mean i'm i'm, I'm too i'm too ah, 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 ah. steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayers we're reading down to 47 and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things in common and they sold their possession and their goods and parted them etc etc 46 and they continuing daily not even weekly the church of old they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart verse 47 praising god and having favor with all the people and what did god do who is the person who brings the crowd a man of god please get away from all that mistake of thinking men of god are using oratory you can invite animals by gimmicks not men men are not stupid a crowd of people cannot be a crowd of idiots there are people who are sensible and went to school when you see crowds god brought them don't get into that thing of same people are just gathering just for entertainment no sir no sir there may be one of two exceptions but you don't generalize there are places god is doing mighty things this place is one of them the bible says and the lord added to the church how many daily such as should be saved so the multitudes of people that come are people sent by God to find salvation. There must be a regular convergence. When Satan wants to frustrate the purposes of God in a territory, he starts bringing people and policies that try to frustrate the gathering of the brethren. Are you seeing that now? That's why things like a crisis is very bad. Because among other things, it puts fear in people and causes men to not be able to come together and to learn. Thank God for platforms. Technology has afforded greater opportunities today. Most ministries and most groups and platforms have social media presence for all those who are part of 
what God is doing in that ministry to connect and follow. There are all kinds of opportunities for growth. Number three. How is the kingdom advanced in a territory? How are the ordinances of God preserved in a territory? Ready? An open display of real miracles, signs, and wonders beyond the church walls. Let me tell you how God is institutionalized in a territory. An open display, not a private, quiet, secret, doubtful manifestation of his power. An open display of real genuine miracles, signs, wonders that are beyond the church wall. Out of all the miracles Jesus performed, please write it and look up. Out of all the miracles Jesus performed, less than one percent of them was done in the church is that true he was strolling one day and then he saw a dead body they were going out a woman was crying had lost her son had lost her husband and he said what's going on here and he said this woman is about to leave he stopped them there and then and brought the son back to life do you know that when a miracle happens and it is not known it doesn't bring god glory the glory god receives is in the announcing of what he has done i know most times people think it's an announcing of a powerful man of god our mother came here and shared testimony our brother here came and shared testimony of someone who has come back to life do you know what that does to you it strengthens your faith and then when the miracle happens in your presence it is beyond doubt that's why listen listen if you're a man of god here you must trust god for grace for instant performance of the world instant performance it is wonderful to go and come back two weeks with results but there is nothing more convincing than the optical eyes of a doubter watching god in action you saw it before during and after when jesus finished declaring his his um call in luke chapter 4 he told the guy with the withered hand he said for starters to prove to you the hand of god is upon me mr man stretch your hand when he stretched his hand that was beyond doubt the highest that can happen to you is you'll be criticized and hated but i assure you god will be glorified an open display why do we need an open display of miracles within territories it creates convictions not just in the heart of church members in the heart of the community many communities do not believe in God because they have not seen him coming in an open display the day God anoints you and you stand and speak over a territory and say God revealed to me that in in five months they are going to tie this road and people laugh at you and say stupid pastor if you want cheap publicity go on air and all of a sudden a rich man comes within that territory and tars that road in five months you don't need to tell them god has done it the next time they see you that convicting power the day you now speak and say i saw death in this community they will not laugh at you again they do not take our words serious do you know why bloggers and journalists write everything about men of god because there has not been an open display of the efficacy of the power and the grace of god something that defies principalities and signs and wonders most of this open display is largely done in the south that's why there are hardly our fathers of faith there the the kind of crowd that comes for their meetings the miracles that happen you will see people sitting on the street selling akara selling pap and watching people rise up from wheelchairs now let me tell you it does not matter how hardened you are if you see a real miracle you must go back and think about it you can choose to argue but the truth still remains the truth what has happened in your family to shut the mouth of those who are doubting those who have laughed at you and said koinonia every time you must trust god for an open display everybody say an open display that one day 
you step into the parlor and all of a sudden someone that is to go for surgery maybe your loved ones just because you stepped in there while they are busy criticizing a man of god on tv you look and say daddy the lord just said i should tell you that this cancer is gone and he loves their young boys i was with you i was i remember serving god in boys brigade when i was growing up while they are talking all that drama there is instant miracle and he touches his stomach he will first quietly go to the room and lock the door and say no no what is happening and within a short time the lord is glorified let me tell you what they will start calling you uh, where is prophetess pastor evangelist we're about to pray is God saying anything? That's a sign that God is working. God is working something powerful in this time. Oh, yeah. God is raising mighty men in our days. He won't stop. He won't stop. Till his church looks like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop. Till my life. chapter 19 please quickly Acts chapter 19 brothers and sisters we need a restoration of the anointing in the body of Christ this anointing thing is not for showmanship the anointing is a silencer of doubters Charles and Francis Hunter of blessed memory would always say that one miracle is worth a thousand words our noise is too much we need a performance of strange and extreme dimensions of the operation of the spirit that stretches people's unbelief until they no longer have a chance to disbelieve god acts chapter 19 verse 11 11 and god wrote what kind of miracles there are ordinary miracles they are supernatural in themselves but they are special miracles by the hands of Joshua Selman, verse 12. So that from his body, this is a very personal scripture for me. So that from his body were brought to the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. Today, we just use it out of showmanship. A man of God just says, hey, What did you say is wrong with you, sir? Darkness is all over our house. So bring his handkerchief. I hold it. We spit on it, we rub it on our face. People carry it back home like a charm. One year after that handkerchief arrived home, nothing happened. It's a sign that there's no power, period. Obed Edom and the ark of God was taken to his house in 90 days. How many days? 90 solid days. It's true that I know that some miracles can take time, but something should start working after some time. Are we together? If I lay hands on you to be delivered and after two weeks you come back one month, nothing has happened. That means something is wrong. Not with you, with me. I should go back for a retreat and say, Lord, these hands. Otherwise, a day will come the hands will just look like tissue paper. As it's coming on your head, you believe that nothing is happening. Keep these hands anointed, oh God. Keep these hands anointed. Keep these hands anointed. That's a good prayer to pray for yourself. Keep these hands anointed. May I never stand upon the stage and waste the time of God's people. May I never lay hands on someone or shake someone and touch someone and his life doesn't change. This is not about showmanship. When your hands are empty, you are not in ministry. Let me tell you, you are just, you are just a, no. Abba. Believe what I'm saying. Keep these hands. Preserve it. Preserve your grace. Preserve the mystery of the oil you have put upon his hands. He said, God brought mighty miracles. Give it to us again, please. By the hands of Paul. What is happening through your hands? Nothing. 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 You don't have to be in church. What is happening through your hands? What happens to my destiny if I shake you? You claim that God lives in you. Brothers and sisters, what has happened to your hands? Nothing. Oh, let me agree with you. And we hold people. 
while we are praying their eyes are opening we are the only ones who close our eyes because they don't believe in us they know that that prayer is just nonsense in jesus name amen they say thank you sir and they go back and say sorry can i see this man of god because that's the real person they know who solve their problems i want you to look at your hands and pray over it in one minute and say lord put something upon this hand put an anointing upon this hand that can represent your purposes it's not a carnal prayer i want you to sincerely pray shake it put an anointing upon my hand so god there are too many sick people in my environment look at the brother that shared his testimony he used his hand to hold the phone and with a single call a dead body came back from the realm of the spirit to the physical place an anointing on my hand place an anointing on my hand hallelujah he said and the disease departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them 13 and certain of the vagabond jews copycats exorcists they took it upon themselves upon them which had an evil spirit you know the name of the lord saying we adjure you they thought it's just by by big manism or wearing nice clothes and one day they saw someone who was heavily under the influence of demon spirits are we together now we are reading to verse 20 and then 14 says and there were seven sons of one skiva a jew and a chief of the priest which did so 15 and the evil spirit answered them that's the side effect of lack of true power it's not that the devil is trying to confess this is not confession this is a question you are, you, are, you, you stupid man of god you think everybody is faking it he called those who are real known by the realm of the spirit not by members jesus i know paul i know who are you hi who are you when a demon spirit asks you who are you is that a nice thing from the realm of the spirit they are watching you every day you have one suit you went for a program they kept water in front of your table they did a, a good publicity and they said now it's time for the man of god a man of strange anointing and you hold the mic and you are talking jargons and someone there is looking at you and all of a sudden the demon spirit with the person heavily possessed just does his hand like that and you collapse on the stage and stand up and say sorry i don't know what happened my mind is ah no there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain break every chain break every chain make progress verse 16 we are reading to 20 and the man in whom the evil spirit was did what leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded the consequence of approaching the power of darkness and the gates of hell when you have not proved that your fire is real there are many arrogant people in the body of Christ. Listen to me. Let me give you a very true secret. The power of God is unlimited, but its operation in the body of believers depends on many factors, which includes their level of spiritual growth. You must have the courage to discern what is your level spiritually. There are many arrogant people 
they will do anything you are seeing some level of acute darkness that does not just require being anointed but a comprehension of deep spiritual mysteries to set the people free you just get up by yourself carry a bottle of oil and travel to one state that has 200 years of track record of acute witchcraft i'm 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 in christ and you go there as soon as you get there you start pouring oil around the compound nobody talks to you you just find out that that night as you are sleeping the next day you get up and find yourself in the hospital what happens they say that's how the spirits work they don't talk to people the next thing you just whatever happens to you is their answer listen it's not everything you see that is that is all that there is when you see a man of god moving in the anointing it's only what you can see with your physical eyes you think is happening but there are interplay of spiritual laws a man can lay hands on someone's head and lay hands on his shoulder and you just think that it was just for the anointing to go anywhere when that man if he's spiritual if he explains to you the dynamics of what he has done are we together it's not all about just touching his head and his shoulder or whatever no that's why we must grow but as we grow we must trust god to know certain realities that require a higher level of anointing and insight there are certain levels of spiritual breakthrough that no matter how an individual is anointed one man cannot bring that level of breakthrough it will take the corporate body to bring it we do not know and one man will be trying to pull down something that is bigger than him so we must have that that's just a lesson for us to learn let's read down please quickly media don't take it away just leave it there so that we we'll hurry up please help us and this was known to all the community are you seeing now something unpleasant now is known to all the community jews and greeks also dwelling at ephesus and fear came upon them and the name of the Lord was magnified. They saw the apostles healing the sick. And I'm sure that they said, what is there? What is there? Miracles. Anybody can heal. The sons of Sceva went to try it. When the demons beat them, it was an endorsement that this anointing is not common everywhere. And the Bible says that the people glorified God. And then verse 18 says, And many that believed did what as a result? They came and confessed and showed their deeds. 19, we are reading to 20. Many of them which also use curious acts. That means there were people who were smuggling magic books and using it, it was working small by small. But when certain men came into that city, they got everyone packing out, including magicians. Do you think if that book did not do something for them wouldn't they have thrown it since they saw something superior and powerful and the bible says they brought their books together and burned them before who a community imagine a popular herbalist in bromo or somewhere maybe zaria city bringing his magic book here and standing before everybody and say i was sent to go and kill one koinonia lady and just because I saw her cat walking, I thought it was all about the before. When I touched fire, I got a reply and a response that I have never seen for 30 years of herbal practice. This is what happened there. And they counted the price of them and they found it 50,000 pieces of silver, 20 popular scripture. So mightily grew the word of God. Why? Because of a public display of miracles, signs, and wonders. We need the supernatural. We need to cry for the anointing. We need a restoration of authentic spiritual power to back our churches and to back our lives. Man of God, don't preach without power. It's not about saying, there's somebody here. The power of God will throw you. That's not what we're talking about. That, that's not power. We're talking of results. Results. Undeniable results. Like some of you are seated here now. You are coming for the first time. You will not need to tell people you came for Koinonia. You will just go back. And all of a sudden, you find out that something has shifted. You open your Bible. 
a true encounter is not known at the moment of the encounter is until the experience leaves and then the person just finds out that something has happened strangely let me give us one more there are six but I'll just stop at number four so that we pray number one is prayer number two is a regular convergence of believers within that territory number three an open display of miracle signs and wonders beyond the church walls number four intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers the fourth way the ordinances of god are preserved in a territory is through an intentional mentorship of younger believers and ministers this is a serious one let me tell you this failure to mentor the younger believers that are rising will produce a generation that will forget god not just forget his ordinances but forget god i'm watching that and i'm throwing this as a challenge to the body of christ and even the church in zaria who are the apostolic and the prophetic voices mentoring our young ones in primary school now everybody has left them and we're focusing on ministry who are the people mentoring those in secondary school thank god for fcs Thank God for um, um, CEM. Thank God for all of these people. But there are some of you here. You need to go back and begin to make sure that young people like Shade's child here. That by the time they are growing, they are not only receiving education alone. There must be an intentional mentorship of younger people. Most people, is the mistake of the American church. They left their children. So you will see a mother who was an old Baptist woman. Served God all her life. But you will find out that her child is a tout and a hooligan somewhere who does not love God. We must concentrate. Right now, most people from the ages of 17 downwards, all they are obsessed about is phones, Android devices, PS4. I don't have a problem with it. But their entire obsession oh what os are you using you hear that that's all they think about oh i'm using this ps4 there's this ah, they need fire oh they need they're not too young they need serious fire i'm not against that it's the reality that comes with that age range but we must be able to guide people that's why i love it when you see our children come here for koinonia I know that many of you say, are they too young to understand? Ask occultists whether the children are too young to understand. You see a small child tie something like a napkin and do it like this and you turn upside down and fall down. That's the child of a herbalist. And they tell you, ah, that guy is one of the most senior person in this tribe. That small boy you are saying that is my son. Is your son in the physical. In the realm of the spirit is something else. An ancient spirit is seated on that small child. There is no child that is too small to receive spiritual things. They may be too small to articulate it, but their spirit is healthy enough to receive it. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 2. Second Timothy. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, he said the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others too? A superstar lifestyle is not God's plan. God's plan is not superstar Apostle Joshua Selman. God's plan is Apostle Joshua Selman committed by grace, certain precepts. And your assignment is to open up your heart and pour it to people so that they also will do so. May God forbid that the day will come in Zaria when the average young man does not know God. Say Amen. May God forbid that in Zaria, during a church service, we'll have young people hanging around, sagging their jeans, and dancing around, and toasting themselves, instead of praying and crying to the God who can change any man's destiny. May God forbid that it's not your child that will refuse to know God. Listen, listen, listen. Our children must love God, and they must love God genuinely. Somebody 
is indoctrinating a generation to hate God. I want you to beware. There is a secret indoctrination of a generation. Ages 5 to 15 must be preserved. Those of you here that God is calling you into children ministry, receive an anointing for it. It's not all about giving children biscuits and sweets. Let them cram the memory verses. That's how we started. Children now don't know any memory verse again. You ask them, John 3.16, they are twisting their tongues and talking nonsense. Teach them. Don't say it's not useful. Let them know. When we were being raised, they taught godly songs. Now in most schools, children cannot have a clean song that does not have explicit contents. A little child is singing a song that even as an adult, you look at him and say, no, this should not be. There must be restoration of godliness. CEM, may God anoint you more and revive you more. Please. FCS, may God anoint you and revive you more. Individual children ministry groups, may God anoint you and revive you more. Because if you yourself are not revived, what will you teach the children? Bad things. Bad things. That's what our children learn now. Things that are more than their age. And we say it does not matter. It matters. You have children in your house who are too young to watch certain things. Don't let them watch it. Don't let them watch it. There are times you need to regulate. I'm not, I'm not trying to be harsh. But there are times you need to regulate all these this, a child of seven years watching television from morning till night switching from one music channel to the other hearing things and receiving them in the spirit and authorizing demon spirits to come and destroy them we must preserve godliness say amen, amen. you don't like what I'm saying I don't plan to stop at all we must say it again and again some of you God gave you instructions before you became popular to visit secondary schools and primary schools not with the name of any ministry and bless them but now that you have become apostle joshua selman you have become madam madam whatever businesswoman or whatever you have stopped go back repent and go back we have this mentality that when we are ministering to children it's a sign that we ourselves are children it's the society that makes it so in a bit to show that we are matured we leave the children and say, look, let's start talking to married men. Jesus said, let the little children come to who? Come to me. He says, and do not forbid them, for for such is the kingdom of heaven. Please return back to children ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. When a child looks at you and does like this to you, don't smile at the child and rub the head. Carry the hand and spank it and say, no, you don't do like this. You greet people. Are we together? Most of us watch children do all kinds of things. A visitor just comes and the child comes and stands in front of him and slaps the visitor and is laughing and you are watching. Is that good? Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child but a rod of correction, not discussion. You don't have to be hostile on children. A little spank with two fingers, one, two, and then tell them what they did that was wrong. Don't just leave them cry. This is what you did. Mommy does not like it. Daddy does not like it. For that reason. One, two. Jesus too does not like it. In, include Jesus. Let them learn. And know that it's not just you alone. Preserve us of the ordinances of the kingdom. There's this song that says, Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. My generation shall praise your name. I made a vow that for as long as I'm alive my generation must know God it's a covenant I've entered with myself there's no going back there's no discussion 
there's no hope of going back to go back is to die in life and in death it's a vow and a covenant i made with myself and everything around my life it is to serve him forever and to introduce him to a generation god is waking us up stop playing games don't wait until the day you have a cathedral of five thousand people you can start now some of you you are the first born you are the only one who knows god in your house your your fourth born can look at you and say stupid girl that's a joke you need to cast out that demon out of their head and organize a standard bible study using a koinonia message and tell them sit down you are 10 years older than him is insulting you beat that devil out of that head and keep that child disciplined the day I give birth to a child who insults me that that day I'm not going to concentrate on the child the spirit that could enter my roof through that child a child of maybe it's a child of two three years nine ten years no see Am I against being, am I, am I for being harsh? No. I'm a compassionate person. But please, brothers, marry though about to marry. Never over pamper children. Let them know discipline is part of love. Because most of our children will be born in millionaire families. You must discipline them. Let spoiled children come up and become a nuisance to society. Pray, they say, no, I, the church is hot. Please, daddy, can you give me the car to the jeep? No, son, you are sitting down here. If me, your father, the owner of the jeep, the jeep is sitting down, you must sit down and pray. Let's go back to our primary schools. I'm serious, I'm rounding up. Let's go back to our secondary schools. Gone are the days when teachers including christian schools i don't know what is christian about the school if they don't pray you have a christian school and you openly said it's a christian school and at the beginning of the class they don't pray what what is what is the christian about it the teacher himself cannot pray you never see a fasting program organized in the school nobody cares while they are praying the teacher who is a young guy somewhere who is not even born again wait and let koinonia start her schools oh yes oh yes let koinonia start her schools and you will see there's nothing like i'm busy who will supervise it it's a mandate don't do that i'm busy man of god and allow the devil kill your ministry sit down open your eyes and see what is happening this teacher's life is questionable He's destroying the life of the student. Call him to the office. Sir, we love you and we don't mean to embarrass you, but we notice that um, it seems you have not been uh, a very good influence over our children. Could there be a problem? Would you need some counsel? Nobody should talk to me. I'm doing all that nonsense. I tell him, as you finish this rubbish, collect your last salary with the cashier, go out of this place and never return. Any good PTA, they should clap for you as the director of that school and say you are preserving standards they laughed at covenant university laughed at landmark university laughed at mountaintop university but these universities today are bringing a standard that is almost getting to cambridge and harvard because they kept god control god and think it will go well with you we'll continue next week six precepts to keep and preserve God in a territory which one have you missed would it be prayer warfare and intercession could it be that you neglect the convergence of believers you come to the house of God today you come after one month or you come to the house of God today you come when all your areas are paid only to come and testify Have you positioned yourself to be used by God for an open display of miracles? Almost every family located here has the hand of Satan roaming somewhere. What is it still doing there when you come from that family? Apostle, can you come and visit us? Try first. Try first. 
don't get used to all this i i love i love his testimony right pastor lawrence i love his testimony it's not all about oh apostle prayed for me and i got a miracle no i came here apostle taught me i carried that understanding back home and i said daddy i know that for 35 years no door has opened in this family but i came all the way from zaria with an anointing i'm using the opportunity of this strike can we pray and fast for just two days and let's watch what god does and in two days something that did not happen in 30 years happens you have revealed christ to that environment and finally we must mentor the younger believers but the younger believers themselves must open up themselves to be mentored because there are many proud proud people proud people you touch somebody he just falls down and you get up and this colleague mentality that people carry around colleague mentality some of you are in secondary school or maybe you have loved ones in secondary school thank god for what god is doing with them and all of a sudden this pompous arrogant attitude you see everybody and what is there you see vision i see vision you pray for the sick i pray for the sick it's why we never receive we keep making mistakes that are avoidable mistakes now let me tell you mentorship can destroy you if the mentor doesn't know what he's doing because some people actually submitted themselves truly to be mentored but they were mentored by people who didn't know what they were doing and they taught them rubbish they taught them pride they taught them a pompous life they taught them a theology of imbalance it matters who you listen to it matters who you open up your spirit to but that spirit must be open brothers and sisters our generation is at stake in the next 10 or 20 years many of the people we look at today will be gone is, is the truth do you believe that many of our fathers they are already wrapping up we insulted them we said ah they came and they taught people cover your head don't cover your head we insulted them they taught people die 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 we insulted them now the button is being passed to us let's hear what our children will say about us we insulted them we refused to see what god was doing to them and as young as we are we kept running our mouth insulting them they preserve the button some of them today look at great men like papa people like billy graham still alive these men serve god to the end let's not insult them and not be able to reach 10 years in consistency that's the song my very powerful song that's the last song we'll sing this night when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did i live my life i can't remember it did i live my life for you when it's all been said and done listen all my treasures will be nothing the jeep and the duplex only what I've done for love's reward will stand the test of time. Am I against prosperity? No. But if that's all you can give a generation, if all you can give your child is secular education and a degree, you have failed. Lord, your mercy is so great. That you look beyond our weakness And find precious gold in Mary clay Turning sinners into saints And I will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after for you've told me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done. You're my life.
when life is gone listen we are not going to be here forever no matter how you don't want to believe me nobody there is no man on earth who is 200 years old 200 years ago none of us on earth today was on earth live your life foolishly we owe our generation and our children a debt I will never except God takes my life but it will not be when I'm alive that I'll see darkness loom over the nations of the earth if it means my life going for it let it go but the ordinances of the kingdom must be preserved in our generation this is ministry if you are not ready for this don't jump around and talk nonsense a lady sent me a text today passionately she may be following listening and she said apostle she's from my village she said apostle come to my village why have you not come i said don't worry you think i won't come there i'm coming god is counting on you listen carefully i'm rounding up god is counting on you i'm not a man of god it doesn't matter there are souls if god planned that in pastor alpha's lifetime you are supposed to save 100 million people do you know if you save 20 million people the world will clap for you but it's when you get to heaven god will say you left 80 million people to go to hell because you did not manifest if god has anointed you to heal 1 million people and you documented 100,000 testimonies they will register you in the Christian Hall of Fame. But when you get to heaven, you hear nonsense. Our works will be tried by fire. Let's make business with God. This wastage of time. Let us start with our Jerusalem, Zaria. Let us start with Nigeria. You see what is happening in Nigeria? You know what most of us are doing? What is happening in this nation? Those who are for A, those who are for B. But the preservers of the ordinances of God know that there are spirits. They can read the writings on the wall. That this is not an issue of north, south, east or west. This is the devil eyeing a generation that wants to love God. And the preservers of the truth say, it doesn't matter where I come from. Lord, it is your kingdom that must be established. Can we take a few minutes to pray tonight? Rise up on your feet. The beginning look at the order god created the heavens and the earth we didn't have an opportunity that's how many people are lord is it what is there with stadium is it not just human beings and god is saying there's something there the attack that comes on you when you feel one stadium the kind of stuff came down when it is god he has no time to come key by key the entire foundation must go